Thank you for joining me for this short presentation. I've entitled, Not Today, Cancer, Not Today. How did I come up with that? Well, you know, it's a journey. Life is a journey. I say life is a dance and we get to decide every day whether or not we're gonna dance or not. And I've decided I'm gonna dance and if I every chance I get, I wanna make a difference. And so my journey has looked like this that brought me to this place where I consider myself a messenger and a cheerleader to bring credible and life-changing information to people to help them lower their risk of getting cancer, optimize their health, lower their risk of getting a reoccurrence of cancer, and really just live their best life. So let's just say that 21 years ago, even though I myself personally have never faced cancer, I walked the journey with both of my parents as a caregiver and a patient advocate. So that gives me over 21 years experience walking alongside of people that I love and care about and, and just really watching them navigate this journey um, and also seeing what happens when someone truly decides they're gonna live and they're gonna dance gracefully with whatever lemons come their way. They're gonna turn it into lemonade. That's what both of my parents did. So that's my desire. So I hope today that I can feed you both physically and emotionally. And really my goal today truly is to bring you hope. So I have not faced cancer. So I can't speak from being in the shoes of a cancer patient, but I have faced my own personal giants. You know, those things that hit you in life and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed and unprepared and you're, you're finding yourself just sinking and losing hope. I have found my, myself there in different circumstances, and there were three things that restored my hope. My relationship with God, which I also saw my parents benefit by in their journey, um, great mentors in my life, and valuable information. So I hope that you have great mentors in your life, or you indeed are one, and you step up to the plate when you get that opportunity. And I hope that you surround yourself with valuable information because that makes all the difference in the world. I became a student of my life situation, whatever it was. And when I saw my parents and other loved ones face cancer, I became a student of health. I wanted to get all the information I could and understand what I could do to avoid or lower my risk. I even recently went through genetic testing because I thought if I'm going to live out what I say and I'm going to do everything that I can to prevent and avoid, then that is something that I should do. That's information that I should have. And I'm not a medical professional with a degree and I'm not here to diagnose or cure. I'm not here to um, have all the answers. I'm just here to bring some life changing information. And let me tell you what I am. I am, like I said, I'm a cheerleader. I, as a job, I am a healthy living coach. And I'm going to talk about the program that I coach people on because we have a testimony I can share with you um, that's pretty exciting about how it just helped rid the body of toxins that are so linked to so many diseases. And I'm a regional vice president with a company that's the number one company for healthy living inside and out. And what I have taught people for over 13 years is that what you put in your body is either fuel or poison. And what you put on your body in terms of personal care products actually gets into your body quicker than food. And within 26 seconds, your organs have to process whatever chemicals or whatever good stuff you put on your skin that goes into your bloodstream. I believe that wellness is about looking at it from a holistic standpoint, looking at the keeping our mind healthy, our body, and our spirit. And my friend Gail Macero, I want to share her story with you because I interviewed her a couple of months ago. And Gail is a dear friend of mine who really dug deep into the research when she was diagnosed with stage two, HER2 positive breast cancer. Now, she went on a journey to make sure she knew all of her options, and I know many people do that. And her decision after she gathered all the information was to take three months of chemotherapy, 
to have a bilateral mastectomy, 25 radiation treatments, and eight months later, she had reconstructive surgery. Now, as she did her homework, she understood how important nutrition was during her treatment phase, as well as during her entire life. And so she did adopt the Arbonne 30 principles in terms of her way of eating. She, what I love about Gail, she is thriving and she has turned her lemons into lemonade by combining her passion with her purpose. And she's currently studying to become a holistic health coach and she's studying to become a cancer care counselor. So she truly is gonna make a difference with her journey. And she shared with me some of the nutrition keys, some of the things that she learned in her research. So the first thing that she said was good nutrition for, to fight cancer is key. And there's a couple of key steps that she highlighted. The first one is to do whatever you can to reduce acidity in your body. Because what we know from research is that, re that an acidic body causes inflammation. Inflammation causes disease. And so we want our body to be as alkaline as possible. The other thing that she learned and that we, many of us know, is flooding our body with good nutrition, clean, healthy nutrition, and lots of it is very important. And anything that you decide to take, whether it be a supplement or a protein shake or anything, always take the ingredient list to your doctor, especially if you're going through treatment. You want to partner with your doctor so that you can have the best of both worlds, taking care of yourself at home and also in your treatment with your physicians. Um, healthy whole food diet, mostly plant-based. And we're not saying that you have to be vegan to prevent and reduce your risk, but eating clean meat is very important. And what clean meat looks like is grass-fed beef, organic chicken, um, just you want the animals feeding on grass that's not been, the field has not been sprayed with Roundup and chemicals and things like that. And so you want to go non-GMO as much as possible as well. So these are some of the things that Gail brought to my attention. Now, on her journey to thrive, she, she showed me some other amazing things. And I want to share with you, um, the Arbonne 30 principles in, the, in terms of nutrition, because there's another person I want to share her testimony with you, and that is Tammy Ray. And Tammy Ray, her mother was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 27 and lost her life. Tammy never got to meet her mother. And at 26, Tammy was diagnosed with cancer. She fought her battle and did well. And her sister got cancer, her older sister who had raised her in the place of her mom, and her older sister unfortunately lost her battle to cancer at the age of 42. Now, Tammy did some research and came upon the information that she had grown up in a neighborhood that was near a plutonium weapons plant that was kind of under the radar. And she found out that there was actually a plutonium explosion when her mother was pregnant with her older sister. And she went to the doctor and decided that she wanted to be tested for plutonium levels. And lo and behold, she indeed had very high levels of plutonium, many other chemicals, heavy metals, and mercury. So she went on a journey to find a way to rid her body of these chemicals, these toxins that she had been exposed to environmentally. And she at first tried ketosis, which unfortunately, it's the big guns of how to pull heavy metals out of your body, but it started to shut her kidneys down so she couldn't continue on that path. So what she did was she adopted the Arbonne 30 Healthy Living Lifestyle, which is a detoxifying nutritional reset system. It's a 30-day reset and then it transitions to a lifestyle and it's based on five principles. And that's my job. My career is with Arbonne International. I'm a healthy living coach and a business coach teaching other people how to coach people on this lifestyle. And so here's the five principles of the Arbonne 30. Number one, eat clean. So this plan helps you to fuel your body for optimal health by eating clean, close to nature, and toxin-free. 
Remember, I told you, everything you put in your body is either fuel or poison. So we teach you how to make those decisions. Then number two, increase nutritional intake. Due to the overabundance of prepackaged and fast food, many people today are overweight and undernourished. And so we have got to learn what it looks like to eat high nutrition and not all this processed food that just creates cravings and, and weight gain. Number three, eliminate allergenic, addictive, and acidic foods, which I talked about earlier. Many people experience symptoms of premature aging and poor health, and they have no idea that the solution is as simple as removing possible food allergens. So we eliminate these foods like gluten, dairy, soy, alcohol, and processed sugar for 30 days, and we hold your hand and guide you as to what to eat so that you're completely satisfied. And then your body tells you, as it releases these symptoms, it tells you what is serving you well and what is not. Number four, balance blood sugar. We encourage eating low on the glycemic index for many reasons. When the blood sugar goes up in response to a high glycemic meal, a process called glycation takes place, and that promotes thinning of the skin, um, cravings, wrinkles, and all kinds of things that just make you not feel great. And so we help you get that balanced blood sugar state. And number five, support the organs of elimination. Because remember, we have to detoxify the body. And we've all been exposed to all kinds of chemicals in our environment, things we've ingested, things that we breathe, and we have overloaded our system with toxins. And so we need to do a cleanup. And so the Arbonne 30 supports the four elimination pathways, which are the liver, the kidneys, the intestines, and your largest organ, the skin. So it's a nutritional reset program. We support you with recipes and I say easy buttons. We have nutritional products that truly are an easy button. And that's what the Arbonne 30 looks like. And that's what Gail lived on. And that's the lifestyle also that Tammy Ray was able to detoxify her body with and then continue a lifestyle of health with that. So the mindset is key. And Gail shared with me that you have to have a determined mind and positive thoughts are so crucial to your health and your healing. And so this leads me to sharing the five ways to prevent breast cancer that Gail introduced me to. And this comes from the study of, of Dr. Anita Sadati and Mary Ann Jones. And their website, if you want more information, is... I will, it's thrivenaturally.com. So you want to definitely look into that. I'm going to tell you what the five things that really all of us should practice, but these are five daily habits that will reduce your chance of breast cancer or a reoccurrence. And I'm even going to tell you the percentages. And this was all based off of a study and re much research. So this is five simple daily steps to reduce your risk of breast cancer by 30% despite the risk factors of genetics, environment, and age. So number one, exercise. Sitting is the new smoking. So their recommendation is 150 minutes of exercise per week. And Gail shared with me that mostly her exercise looked like walking. So don't underestimate the power of a good daily brisk walk. You can reduce your cancer risk by 25 to 30% just by getting in 150 minutes of exercise per week. Number two, nourish. Superfoods, olive oil, green tea, fiber. Get these healthy things into your diet. You can reduce your risk by 20 to 40%. And that's what we do on the Arbon 30. We increase your, we, your nutrient intake. And number three is my favorite, play in the sun. Now, why play in the sun? Get outside and get your vitamin D. There is a direct correlation between the lack of vitamin D and breast cancer. The recommended vitamin D level for all of us is 40. And for cancer patients, it is 50. So make sure you know what your vitamin D level is. Ask your doctor to test your vitamin D level. Number four, reduce alcohol and hydrate. 
the recommendation is zero alcohol. At least one to two drinks per week at the most, because three to six drinks per week increases your risk of breast cancer occurrence or reoccurrence by 20%. Each additional glass adds a 10% risk. Women drinking two drinks a day have a 51% increased risk of developing breast cancer or having a reoccurrence. And number five, near and dear to my heart, reduce sugar. Risk increases 19% for those that have a high intake of sugar. And we know that sugar, sugar feeds cancer cells. I sat with a friend of mine recently this year when she was diagnosed with cancer and I heard straight from the doctor, the oncologist's mouth, you have got to get sugar out of your diet. If you're drinking sweet tea, sugary drinks, and just, you know, we're consuming sugar when we don't even know we're consuming sugar. So when we know we're consuming sugar, we know we need to eliminate that. To hear that from a, the mouth of an oncologist really gave me hope to see that this is what's happening even in the doctor's offices these days. Because I can tell you that 20 some years ago when I was the advocate and the caregiver for my parents, I didn't hear that kind of information. So I really hope that you have grabbed a hold of some information today, you've been encouraged, and you have some hope, some newfound hope to really know that you can make a difference. If I can answer any questions, please reach out to me and or reach out to the person that invited you to take a look at this video. We would love to partner with you on this journey, give you hope, help you optimize your health, and help you live your best life. Thank you so much for joining me.